Z 2014, uh, case 14, Roger Bud Jr. Yes, sir. The subject property in this request is asking to rezone 4.28 acres from residential R10 to general commercial CG. The property is located between a highway commercial, res or a highway commercial retail area to the west, and Interstate 75, and then a golf course neighborhood to the east, which is R10 Domino. With that, the request went through staff and has been seen before by the commission back in 2009. And ultimately, the staff uh, renegotiated the conditions and recommended for its approval with four conditions. You have those conditions within your packet. And we believe it's ready for your consideration tonight. We've gotten positive feedback from uh, the developers and their agents regarding the conditions. Uh, I have nothing re to report to you as far as um, opposition or letters or phone calls. So we do believe it's ready for your recommendation. Are there, any, are there any questions for the staff? If not, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? Please approach the podium and give us your name and your address. Angela Keenan, Warren Park, and Campbell Lane, Department of the Lizard. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for here tonight. Um, Roger would just like to have this property changed out of Arizona. I'm currently the only property right next door. And um, we're going to hopefully put a family dollar store there. In order to do that, we will need to rezone this property from R10 to Commercial General. Um, we just want to square off our property in order to be able to do that. See, on, if you look on the screen, the property right next to it, that's ours. And it has on, let's show you to where it's squared off right there at the bottom. That's why we need to do mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Our hopes are to later on um, maybe use that property for Excuse a restaurant. Me. Could you pull that mic back and forth just a little bit? I'm sorry. Thank you. So we're hoping that later on we'll be able to maybe build a restaurant or something to utilize that property, but we will be following the conditions that are inside the package. All right. Are there any questions for the uh, presenter from the commission? Yeah. 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 Just to, to be clear, mm -hmm. um, what you the reason for the rezoning is because Currently, you own the property directly to the west of it, yes. mm -hmm. and the proposal or what you are trying to do is develop that property, but square it right. off, square so you're going to be borrowing a portion from the bigger property yes, to put the, what, it's going to be a family dollar store, mm -hmm. um, and your future plans would be the rest of the property maybe have some, right, either a restaurant or else another, um, you know, store or something, you know, something that would suit that property. So are you going to be seeking to replant the, the properties or you just want to turn it all into one? I, no. I'm not sure how that would... <sighs> no, I don't think you plan on replanting it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Got some questions. Have you talked, has he talked with the bank of those dogs there that would be assigned? So far, we don't have any complaints. So far. You don't have mm -hmm. any of the people Francis Lake, have they been notified? Everyone um, at, around the surrounding parcel was notified. Around the lake there? Everyone that was on for every adjacent parcel. Yes, Just the adjacent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the presenter? If not, we appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Is anyone of the audience who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Please approach the podium and give us your name and address. James D. Carroll, 3201 Ridgefield Lane in Valdosta. I own the property that's on the lake down there, a lot and a house that's there. That 
house is one of approximately 225 houses that are in that subdivision that we're wanting, that uh, Mr. Bud is wanting to cut back the size of a recreational area when the county and the chamber and everybody else is pushing for recreation <coughs> items for people to participate in and retired people that move into the area here. And this is going to put truck noise, traffic around that, light infiltration from spotlights in the, <coughs> lights in the uh, parking lot. Um, I'm opposed to it just from a standpoint of we're encroaching on an existing subdivision that's got that many people living in it. That's all I have. Anyway. All right. Are there any questions for the presenter from the commissioners? Can I say one on the line? Sure. I was not, I did not receive a notice. The only people that received notices were those who have contiguous property to the developable property. And I didn't get any notice. Nobody around the lake did. I've talked to several people that have not. The people that are contiguous did get one. Right. I think that's all we're required to do by law, but I'll let the staff speak to that. Yes, sir, that's true for this particular case that the black lines indicate the property and everyone who touched the property, including those across the street, was sent a registered letter. The sign was posted, it was advertised in the BDT, but those are the boundaries of the, the current notice requirements. Across what street? Uh, Lakes Boulevard. <coughs> are there any questions for the presenter? Where is your property in relation to the uh to the park that we're looking at today. The southeast point of the property points directly at my property that's on the lake there. It's on the lake. Across my the road. mine is on the lake. The yeah. larger lot. The, the bigger lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned it taking up recreational property are you talking about the, the golf course as being the recreational park yes and isn't part of that going to be done away with one of the holes to make the property i harder? think it was but i wondered if there was a park or something that i didn't notice i walked it and it's all open land there's yeah. there's nothing there and, and except a little piece we're doing of two things here aren't we sir we're voting on whether to approve the rezoning request but we also seem to be voting on uh, making the subject property larger through doing away with part of the golf course. I have seen no maps. I'm not other than what you're all well, looking at. Right part now. of that golf course is in that area that's being rezoned as I understand it in the maps that we've got. So I think it's one tee box and one hole of golf course. And down that main street there. And the developable property is growing, the more businesses in there, more traffic around the subdivision. Well, I presume if they developed it, it would, but I think it would be accessible from that, what is that, Lake Boulevard? Right. All right, any other questions for the presenter? If not, we thank you for your time tonight. Okay. Is there anyone else in the audience would like to speak in opposition to this application? Robin Miller, I own the property that is connected to the property and issue for sale. And I do not feel like the uh, um, neighborhood is going to benefit from this. 
So now it's just me buying my home on the golf course. I bought it family dollars to be behind my house. I'm a single mom with three kids. I have children that get off the bus by themselves. And I just do not feel like it's going to be a safe environment. Are there any questions for the presenter, for the commissioner? Still, you you own the house in, in the cold side? Is that, in, in your backyard, back to Director 2, this proposed rezone? Yes. Are you the one that's right there at the, uh, where the point is in the corner, or is it the next one up? I'm at the point where the end of the property meets. So my backyard will be. All of your backyard, but okay, you're in the middle of the town. There's a property there. Okay. All right, thank you. And you have a, how long have you lived at this location? Uh, 20 years. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this application? There being none, I will now close the uh, public participation portion and the session is open once the commission. Sure. Yes, it, to general commercial was the previous request. Do you remember what the reasons were? To actually rezone it? The reasons we did not rezone it. Um, yes, sir. When it got to the county, uh, the planning commission recommended approval seven to one. Um, one of the commissioners was concerned about allowable uses. That was the one vote against. When it got to the county commission, uh, they talked about protection of a residential area and that the request was speculative in nature. Those were the ones that I wrote down as far as grounds for denial of that. So we got approval with conditions from staff, overall approval from the Planning Commission, but denial by the county. <coughs> so two of the issues that the commissioners were concerned about, four still is. One of them, protection of a residential area is debatable that the second condition related to speculative nature, the change here is that Mr. Bud owns the property adjacent to it and has a use that, that he would like to put there. Um, but that's on the far western border of this property, you know, the far 50, 100 feet. Um, the speculative nature is for the rest of the property, and that's still true. I've not heard a definite use for the four acres only for Mr. Bud's usage of the property next to the Bank of the Ozark property to the west, the one that we zoned commercial some time ago. So that piece is still respected? Largely, yes. The majority, other than the little wedge. That's right. The, the wedge is really why we're here. Roger's negotiation with the current property owner, the results of that negotiation is, is why we're here. I think, uh, I honestly believe Roger would rather buy just what he needs but that's just not what the negotiation is. As far as the 100 feet versus the four acres. Yes. Discussion uh, amongst uh, All right. When someone asks about the replanting and the point with the, what is the answer to that? Uh, I think the answer is actually yes, because what I anticipate is the problem, one of the problems here is a family dollar would like more room. And so if Roger acquires this property, then I believe a flat would be reported that expands the western property by 50 to 100 feet to allow that more room. So I think that at the least, 
the property would shrink slightly and Roger's property that he owns now would grow slightly. So I think that will be done with the plat. I think there will be some platting done if the zoning is successful. And then Mr. Chairman, I actually just have one update. When I took the conditions back to the TRC last week on condition number three about dumpsters shall not be located within 200 feet of any residential dwelling, uh, we voted to clarify residential dwelling as existing residential dwelling. So that way, if there's an existing residential dwelling, that will be protected, but if someone chooses to build a new residence after this is put there, that would not apply to them. It's trying to protect what's already, what's already there with the intent. So I would just ask that if you consider those conditions, you put existing residential dwelling, if that direction is true. I got a question for you. All right. You said a uh, family dollar. Yes, sir. I thought it was Dollar General. The applicants on Mr. Bud's property, which is to the west, to the northwest here, has been a family dollar operation. Okay, well, now we got a family dollar already in the uh, right there beside Wayne Dixon, mm -hmm. and then we got a fridge right up the road on the left. Yes, sir. Um, okay. I still, I still believe it. I believe it has been family dollar. Exactly. Yes, sir. All right. Any other discussion, Master Commissioner? One more question. I want to ask a question. One more question. On the flag, um, is it not possible because of first in the whole area, or if this was not the total thing was not approved? would approve the small parcel. Is that a possibility or you understand what yes, the question is? Um, the wedge that they need but not I'm you're asking if you could approve split zoning. If you could possibly approve only rezoning a portion of the property. The wedge and leaving, that they need and leaving the, the rest as it is existing. I think is I, I agree. I think as long as you went with the current zoning CG or OI, and then left the rest R10, I think that will be possible. There might be some who disagree, but I think as long as you keep the same level of zoning and decrease the intensity, you're o I think you're okay. I think that's available to you. Okay. I think that leaves the door open in the future for if they want to develop it, they can and can come in with something more specific yes. instead of maybe this or maybe that but you'll still be able to develop a piece of property in the future. Yes, sir. I mean, that, to me, you know, the, the agents are here, but I believe that Mr. Bud's primary request is to be able to service Family Dollar immediately. The only thing, if you go that direction that I would ask, is that you would be specific about where the split occurs so that the commission will be able to, to really map it accurately. Doesn't that flat look right here show that dimension? The actual dimensions? Uh, she passed out, Ms. the woman's answer. Does it show us? It does. It shows. Um, it shows just dimension one to right here. Mm -hmm. So that, that they were just trying to take the, the front of the road square from there. Is that correct, Lisa? They actually narrowed it down by a few feet and then they drew a straight line almost parallel to the western bound. According to the sketch, and so they created a rectangular lot that's 170, almost 175 feet. It's three counted with that same exact dimension to the back, and they created a parallel line to the western boundary and to the east. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to take a look at the drawing as well just to confirm that. But my understanding is we're talking about for the family dollar to be successful, about I think it's less than 100 feet of property on the western border. What is the property zone that Mr. Bill right. It is Highway Commercial, which is a more intense commercial with conditions. If you look on the zoning map, the Highway Commercial is the dark red in color. General Commercial, which is what they're asking for, is kind of our mid-grade commercial, so it's less intense than Highway. Um, but Mr. Bill's property is that red, it's Highway Commercial. He's got to get that Are 
Is there any other discussion amongst the commissioners? Uh, Mr. Davenport, how is it that the home is being closed? Is that owned by the golf courts or is that owned by Lynn Properties? Or? It is currently owned by Leninco, which is the golf course operator. And Leninco has a contract with Mr. Bud that is contingent on the rezoning, the sale of the property. So the golf course owner operator is the current owner. But Mr. Bud has a contract on that portion. Would you say that again? Sir? Yes, sir. The Leninco is the current owner of the subject property. Leninco is the golf course operator. I believe it's Francis Lake Golf Course. So that is the operator owner of the golf course. Leninco entered into a contract with Mr. Bud where Mr. Bud agreed to purchase the property if the property was rezoned. So really, he, he has a property contract that's contingent on the zoning being successful. The little wigs that we're looking at right here, mm -hmm. is any part of the golf course, like the tee box or the, the tee box would be affected this way. But they could, they could renegotiate that. Uh, sir, I'm sorry, I just don't know. I mean, I. I don't know how much 100 feet would take away from that uh, fairway. It looks like 54 feet, Jason, is what yeah. we're taking away. <clears throat> if you look at the uh, this map, you can see where the tee box is in relationship to that green line. So, uh, it looks like it's going to maybe not affect the tee box, but it's going to affect the fairway between it and the hole. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they want any, <laughs> anybody golfing over the Dollar General store there or the family dog, whichever it is. I wouldn't want to be in the parking lot. If this is done successfully, then what will happen is Roger will um, be required to construct a buffer to the east. So they will be the golf course property and then a, I anticipate a fence and a buffer and then the um, family dollar store. Right. So I mean, they'll. They'll actually have to be a buffer yard um, that'll surround this property because if the golf course remains R10, we require buffering against R10, even though it's a golf course, we still require buffering. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to make an observation that it seems like we are entertaining a condition five, which is basically what we are discussing here. But I think that condition is going to impact the first condition, which uh, which requires the easement to the eastern and western side. If we do the split zoning concept that we are going for, I think the western edge where we are trying to accommodate that rectangular lot of potential flat is going to be that 24 foot easement may not make sense there. Yeah, I would, I would say if the split zoning option is, is considered that I don't believe, I don't know if any of those conditions really would apply because you'd be rezoning such a small portion of property. I don't, you know, I, I don't know if the ingress egress easement would be applicable because it, it wouldn't be very wide. The two stories in height, again, you're only rezoning a small portion of property. The dumpsters would be well beyond 200 feet from the existing residences like Ms. Miller's would be well beyond that. <coughs> and then light pollution, you know, there would be... I think that would be probably still apply. I, I agree. I mean, I think those conditions would probably fall off if we rezone only a, a portion of that property. And I'm thinking 100 feet or less, then I think all those would probably not be as effective, not be as applicable. I think you'd have a required buffer yard and... Um, to me, those conditions, we were really thinking you're going to develop four acres, and we wanted to make sure we were trying to be extra protective of those residences that were out there. All right, any other discussion amongst the commissioners? If not, I will entertain a motion from the commissioners. Mr. Chair. Mr. Willis. I'll make a motion that we do approve a split zone 
based on the map I have in my hand, you can make a comment of it. Mm -hmm. This one here. That we approved the wedge that was on this plant, the small wedge, to accommodate the uh, Dollar General or Family Dollar, whichever it is, that the I think it's going to be covered under the uh, just normal permitting, but there would need to be a eastern and southern buffer with an okay fence on that side also. I think that small cut will be plenty of plenty of distance away from the existing residence. Uh, also, and the other remaining portion of that parcel, remaining R10. Can we meet condition four there for the lighting? The light pollution number four. Basically what we're doing to restate that, the wedge that's on this map is all that we're changing to CG. Mm -hmm. My motion anyway, we're not changing anything yet in that motion. But the motion is to change only the wedge to CG. The remaining portion of the property remains as R10. A buffer and opaque fence on the west and south. And it may require on the, the Excuse me, on the east and south. Mm -hmm. Sorry. We may require on the west, but that'll be a permitting. And number four, condition. All right, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Willis. I second. We have a second by Mr. Bailey. Are there any questions on the motion? There being none, all those in favor of the motion, please do so by raising your right hand. Passes uh, five to two with one abstaining. Okay. 